Omar Samad, he is the former Afghan ambassador to Canada, France and Belgium. Thank you so much for speaking to us. It's been five months uh, since the election. Is Ashraf Ghani's re-election a result Afghans can accept now? Well, that is a good question. Uh, in the next few days, I think we will see the reactions across the country beyond the reactions we've seen over the last five months. It has taken more time than any, any time in the, in, in the previous elections that we have seen to come up with this result. I think that re elections are usually supposed to be fair and transparent. Uh, there are a lot of questions about this particular election and how, especially the election commission, I, I, it's called the Independent Election Commission. I'm not sure if many Afghans think that it's independent enough at this point, uh, how it handled the situation. I think that there is more trust in how the Election Complaints Commission handled its work, even though it was uh, a very uh, sort of in a conser conservative manner. Uh, but uh, it, we have entered, I think, a new political phase in Afghanistan where, on one hand, you have to deal with the peace issue. On the other hand, the aftermath of a very controversial election. Right. Uh, what about, though, Abdullah Abdullah's supporters' threats now to form this parallel government, do you think they should be taken seriously? Well, I think that in Afghanistan, at this very critical juncture, uh, as I said, with, uh, you know, peace talks going on between the Americans and the Taliban, about uh, talks about uh, a deal being signed in the next few days, uh, the fact that Afghans are supposed to get together and talk about the future of their country and decide how to deal with the Taliban at the, at the political level, uh, that at this point, uh, obviously, you cannot ignore all Afghan factions, all polit politicians, all those with uh, social and, and political capital uh, going forward. Uh, and these elections happen at a time when um, it's very sensitive, and these sensitive times have to be dealt with uh, statesmanship. And I, and I don't know if Afghan leaders will be able to show that. I'm hoping that they will, uh, but it is a very sensitive time. Okay, I mean, Ashraf Ghani has had years to show the kind of leadership you're talking about before. Do you think he might change now uh, with this new mandate? I don't know. Uh, I think that he wants, he has a plan, he has a strategy, he has uh, uh, steps to go forward and be in control of the political process as well as the peace, as, as the peace process. Uh, I, I don't think that most of the Afghan political class trusts him. I think that there's a trust deficit that has to be overcome. Uh, I think that Afghans obviously have to merge and come together if they want to make sure that they can sit at the table and have a firm hand dealing with the Taliban. Right. Uh, I'm not sure that today we have a firm hand with Ashraf Ghani winning a razor thin margin with 0.6%, above 50%. And, you know, as far as those peace talks with the Taliban are concerned, the Taliban wasn't interested in dealing with Ashraf government's, uh, Ashraf Ghani's government anyway. Uh, so how should talks even proceed now? The United States says they're so close to cutting this deal. But if Ashraf Ghani and his government isn't brought into the fold, how will a peace deal work? A very good question, and this is one of the most important points. If the Taliban are, have not and continue to uh, not want to talk to Ashraf Ghani, uh, because they, for whatever reasons, they don't think that he represents uh, fully the opposition or the other part of the Afghan society, uh, then we have a huge problem on our hands. And that means that, unfortunately, uh, everybody is going to go back to uh, weapons and arms and continue the fighting, which is not what the Afghan people want or deserve. Omar, Sam Omar Samad, thank you so much for joining us there. We, we greatly appreciate your insights.